is the compact disc most certainly will Hey everybody. Every pony. Sorry. Sorry. Welcome to the BronyCon art panel. The staff put this together. We chose artists, um, very popular fan artists for you. And they are going to show some of their favorite pieces, talk about them for a little bit, and then we're going to have some Q&A. So without further ado, welcome our panelists. Come on up, everybody. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Yeah? Isn't BronyCon the best convention ever? I don't know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. We need a ball pit, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. It'll just make all the better. <laughs> so, uh, if you guys are ready to start, I guess we can get the show on the road. So, should we introduce ourselves first? Yeah. Go all right, ahead. well. My name is Ashante Johnson, but I guess some of you guys might know me as uh, Earth Song 9405. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. My name is Samantha, or Jada Jinx. And you might know me from my comic, My Little Thrillist. Nice. So I'm a, <laughs> I'm a comic artist, so yeah. yeah. And I'm Assassin Monkey. You might know me for digital art. Of course. Like mostly involving episode art. Your art's great. <laughs> <laughs> I am Denny Butt. You probably know me as um, awesome. a bunch of things. <laughs> as that person who didn't draw Applejack's mother. <laughs> <laughs> that was cruel. Um, that yeah. was. It was hilarious. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Eric Proctor. Um, probably know me as Sao Shin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I'm T Sidra 360. You've probably seen my designs on Wheel of Fine and on Equestria Daily Draw Friends. Hi. Um, I'm Butts and stuff. Uh, I'm not as cool as these other guys, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Oh. Uh, I'm Lauren Herta, uh, or Laura Ipsa, and I'm the head of design for BronyCon. All right. Also known as Design Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'm going first, so I guess here we go. So uh, for those of you who watch me, I guess you know me mostly for how I use uh, my art style is mostly uh, realistic, I guess, and I don't know why I went back, but this is my first piece. I call it Eclipse, Renited with You. Um, those who watch might know that uh, my, the main theme of my work is head cannons. What I like to do is take, take a, what the show is given and uh, analyze it and maybe expand upon it uh, based on my own ideas, and this is one of them. One of the, the idea behind this painting is when the sisters reunite and use their magic in tandem, maybe, I don't know, they, they uh, create the, an eclipse, but when the eclipse happens, it's not foreboding or dark, like it's usually uh, portrayed in media, so I try to make it look magical, and I hope I portrayed that well. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, okay, okay, I guess I was pretty successful, so thank you, thank you. So that's the first one. That one took me about 20 hours to finish. It's, a, it's traditionally painted with acrylic, and it's on a pretty big art panel, let's just say that. So yeah, it was a lot of fun, and, and I sold it last year, so I don't have any more, and I'm a little sad about that. Yeah. So this is my next one. It's Pinkie Pie and Gumby. I don't know if you guys know them. Yeah. I don't know. I hope you guys <laughs> think it's cute. I don't have much of an explanation for this, except for I just wanted to do something cute. I hope I pulled that off. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this one was made with watercolor, and I don't have much headcanon on this except for uh, 
I just really like Pinkie Pie. And the longest part of this was her hair. The entire piece took me four hours, but her hair alone took me three hours to paint. Yes, but she's fine, but like, come on, Pinky, let's not, <laughs> let's not do this. So I guess that's the only two ones, and I hope you guys like it. And we can go ahead, that's me. Thank you, thank you. I'm second. Oh, are you? <laughs> go for it, though. All right, so um, my images. There. All right, nice. so. This was originally going to be a image done for the 100th episode. It was going to have all of the background ponies, as in Doctor Who's and Derpy, Lyra, and Bon Bon. And they were going to do this like montage of thing, like Lyra and Bon Bon was going to do this like spy thing, and Doctor Who's and Derpy was going to do muffins. I don't know, time stuff, timey wimey stuff. <laughs> but um, it turned out to just be an Octavia and vinyl because my hand had hurt, my hands hurt. <laughs> I couldn't do all that. Um, but this was a, I did this during the, in a live stream. I was coloring it for the meetup group for PonyCon New York City. And I was doing this live and then I went to the meetup and decided to sell it as a print. The hardest part in this was trying to get the lighting right, especially in vinyl scratch, and trying to get that wub feeling. <laughs> like, I was trying to show the melody and the harmony between the classical music and the wub dubs, because I love dubstep. <laughs> I think it's a really good form of music. I just like doing, <laughs> you know, when I'm hearing the song. And I also like classical. I don't know if any of you heard of Lindsey Sterling, the chick that does the violin stuff. <laughs> She's one of my favorites, you know, classical dubstep type of thing. And I didn't even know that was possible. Come on, like violin dubstep, that's weird. So she kind of also inspired me with this, with um, Octavia doing her thing. And I was listening to her music while doing this, so it was inspiration, so that's mine. Um, the next one is my personal favorite. It's, um, this was actually requested by some, uh, I think it was the Brony Chef. Um, he asked the paper pony to do a shadow box for him for his con one of his conventions, I think, in Mexico. And they asked me, hey, can you design a sketch for us to make for his um, convention? And it has to look good, but simple. And I'm like, okay, cool. When do you need it by? Yesterday. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. So um, while I was in school, I sketched this and ignored the teacher's talk, and I just sketched it out. <laughs> because that's when I do the most sketching is when teachers are talking to me. So I sketched it out, sent it to them, and she's just like, wow, okay, but it wasn't colored. I just kept looking at this picture a little bit more, and I'm just like, you know what? I think I'm gonna color it, maybe sell it as a print or something, and this is what I came up with. Um, it's one of my favorite pieces. I did a lot of classes in color theory in college, and that helped me well with, um, especially Celestia, because Celestia isn't pure white. She's like a really, really light pink. So to try to get that thing in between, she's not, you know, being pink, but not, and you can tell that she's still white is, was kind of difficult. So I hope you enjoyed my images. I really do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my turn now. <laughs> yeah. I gotta admit, I'm kind of sad that I cannot remember seeing the previous one. Like, it looks gorgeous. But, like, when thinking about my art, like, I had to choose stuff for this. I had, like, kind of a hard time. Cause I kind of have a lot of to, stuff to choose from. So, like, I'm, like, <laughs> I make for every episode. So, like, count the episodes and, like, add some more on that. Like, because, well, I gotta make Applejack every time, of course. So, <laughs> like, yeah. So, that's. This is kind of a recent style like, that I quite like. It's, it's actually like OC, so like, I, I also have some Applejack uh, in the style, but it seems to also be fairly uh, favorite amongst, uh, amongst you out there. Like, and like, it's just been extremely fun, and just getting the reactions of like, oh, is that a figurine, or like, is that real? Like, that's just been motivating me even more and more, and just like, for some reason, it doesn't feel like I changed a lot at the beginning of this year when this style kind of started, but 
the, something just clicked, and suddenly it just looked way different, and it just I went with it, and like that's something that I quite like to do is like just sometimes just change little things, experiment, like and just try out new stuff and just continue making stuff. Like sometimes I even do completely different stuff. Like if you've ever seen my gallery, you might have noticed that. <laughs> So, but like a bit older piece over here, like sometimes you also just want to, instead of uh, just trying out new cells, you want to try out uh, spending more time or something. And this, this one kind of uh, calls me back really far and I just had to put an apple piece in it. So, well, yeah. So this, this one is, I think I work like the longest one ever. So, which might be kind of noticeable. So in this one, I Kinda. focused, yeah, <laughs> maybe I might have overdone the outfit a bit, perhaps. <laughs> I might have? have. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wanted to add a bit more here and there, but uh, I wanted to make more Apple Jacks after this as well, but it's a hard, cho uh, hard to choose, like continue on an Apple Jack or make another Apple Jack. Like, why not both? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, there's never enough Apple Jack. <laughs> but yeah, like with, with these things, like sometimes you just got to, uh, try out new styles and that's like what I'm all about like just trying something out and like just going for it looking what it ends up being with and sometimes you just roll with it and like if you're having fun continue doing that and I had that with this and um, like for this one there's also like a work in progress that's also like sharing so like sharing is caring like that you might have noticed like work in progress stuff like be sure to check on my different art like for well, for that uh, kind of stuff I try to upload for FVP so you can see kind of the process but yeah, like I thought I'd just kind of show off uh, these things, so my recent style and like my approaches to stuff. Thank you. Yay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am Danny, but. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on to the. <laughs> I don't have much to say about myself except I'm Danny Bart. Hey, Senpai. <laughs> okay. Um, this is one of my recent pieces of my Celestia. Um, I didn't draw. I didn't draw it too long ago, but I'm really proud of it actually because I don't. Um, I do draw like uh, pictures with backgrounds, but I, ha I feel like I haven't done it in a while. So this was really nice to draw and. I was so happy with how it turned out, especially with the water and stuff. And um, what sparked this picture is I just thought, I wonder what Celestia would look like with like non-wavy hair, like with wet hair, like completely flat. So I just decided to draw a Celestia swimming in a lake because I just thought, oh, that would be nice, you know. She probably just gets like fed up with like being royalty all the time, and she just wants to get away, you know for a bit and she has wings so she can just fly off you know <laughs> <laughs> I would um, but yeah I'm just like really happy with how this turned out because um, like I said the water like um, I don't know how I did it <laughs> I just kind of just did it um, uh, yeah oh another thing the mountains the mountains because things when I draw rocks and mountains and stuff I usually spend days on it but this I managed to draw like in a few hours and I just don't know how I did it. Sometimes I draw things and I just like, I don't know how I did that. And <laughs> it just happens. Um, but yeah, this is uh, one of the pieces that I am quite proud of. And plus the shading kind of uh, turned out quite good because sometimes my shading comes out weird and then other times it comes out good. Like my vinyl scratch one, which I drew quite a while ago, I'm quite happy with the shading on that. Um, I think it's because the shading that I used was slightly greenish, and for some reason it really blended well with the um, with the whole picture. And yeah, next one, next one. This is a. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I don't know if you recognise it. I don't know if anyone went to uh, PonyCon New York City. Yeah, I see you in the front. Um, in February, I drew this as the poster for PonyCon, and it also was the front cover for the, uh, I think it was the map book. But anyway, yeah, I am really happy with this because it took me like three, four days to make, which for me is a lot, like I'm three solid days like of non-stop working. Um, 
I mean, I had to use like references for the background to like obviously, um, but it was a lot of fun like um, getting pictures, like even getting getting um, pictures to use for the uh, television uh, billboards and stuff. And it even features um, Citrus Art there, who was also at PonyCon. Um, I'm also happy with the, the shading on the ponies and the expressions and stuff. Um, in the background, uh, there's like a couple of like old art of mine. Like there's like a G1 ribbon there. I don't, you probably can't see it, but there's that. And there's also a Lyra and Bon Bon that I, that I drew exclusively for that. Um, and yeah, I'm just like, there's just so... <laughs> I, I haven't done a really, really detailed picture like this in forever, and I really should like um, spend three days dedicated to a picture more because I, I really like how it turns out. And yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um. I, I'm Buds and stuff. I make plushies, which is a little bit different from what we've seen so far. Uh. <laughs> um, so I've really been into making smaller things lately. I used to think that bigger was better, but I've been really enjoying making smaller things. So this is <laughs> one of my most recent smaller things, which She's really tiny, about this big. Um, I'm really happy with how she came out. I <laughs> uh, so in contrast, I have this Luna that I made recently. And while the Pinkie Pie took about four hours, Luna took about 24 hours. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> really cool. uh, so, but I'm in in the same way. I'm really proud of how Luna came out, even though she's so different and so much more complex. I, I'm just really proud of both of them, even though they're so different from each other. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Eric Proctor. Uh, I'm a pretty much just digital painting, but I actually had a background in uh, oil painting. So a lot of my digital stuff kind of emulates the things that I learned when I was in college. Um, and I really like digital painting now because there's so much more that I can do that doesn't just drive me crazy, like having tons of overlap. So I kind of blow that overboard now. So one of the things I really like to do, and this is my most recent painting, is to do lots and lots of fluid, organic, and flowing motions through the two characters, and I, I really love the, the interactions between Discord and Fluttershy, so this was a piece was like, oh, I gotta do this for BronyCon. Um, but in this piece, I, I kind of nail everything that I really love about digital painting, the high saturation, lots of overlap. Um, if you make a mistake, it's easy to fix. You can just hit the undo button. Um, but that said, I actually prefer painting on just two layers one for the characters and one for the background. So there is still a lot of places in the painting where I pull the background color into the figure so that I can give it still that kind of atmosphere that I would have in a traditional painting setting. Um, I do a lot of my custom brushes on myself, so like a lot of that is seen here, like in the hair or in the textures or in all of that. But yeah, that's primarily what I focus on. And there's the piece. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen this, but there's a bunch of these now. Uh, this, this is the first one. I actually had picked up a new tablet, and anytime I pick up a new tool, I have to practice with it. And I said, okay, well, what has lots of things that I can practice? Water, rock, hair. So I picked this scene from The Little Mermaid, but I actually really hate drawing people. <laughs> so, instead of drawing Ariel's face, I put Grumpy Cat's face on it instead. And when I would put that on there, I just thought it looked so ridiculous. I, I was like, okay, this looks so stupid, but let me text the screenshot to a couple of friends and see what they think. And they said, oh my God, you gotta, you gotta finish that up. You gotta put that online. That needs, to, that needs to actually exist and not go in the trash can. So I put it up and of course, everybody thought it was ridiculous and they all asked me to go through the rest of them. And now 
this is part of your no. There's um, Circle of No, there's Lion King, and I mean, there's like 12 of these at this point now. I'm still doing them, but this just started as a doodle, and it shows you, you know, something like that can turn into something pretty fun for everyone. So never trash your stuff, guys. <laughs> That's all. I guess it's my turn now. A little tip, remembering my name, T360 360, is read it backwards. It's artist. Just remember uh, on the back. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know that. No. Now you know. <laughs> no, really. This piece. Oh man, what got an interesting history on this. I got really frustrated with an art block during an art stream one time. And through frustration, I just drew a whole bunch of angry expressions, and I drew Twilight, and I'm like, wait, this looks pretty cool. <laughs> so I took that uh, illustration and uh, started refining it, and oh my goodness, it took me a ton of time trying to figure out the perspective in this image, the, eye, the uh, fish bulb effect, the fish eye effect, there we go. Mm -hmm. And I, I still had some issues with it that only I can see. I'm not going to tell you what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, if you, I, I recorded the whole process on YouTube, uh, same name on YouTube. You can find a time lapse how I illustrated this piece, and you can see I like I was I was adding in some trees, some boulders, a house. I'm like, no, nah, this is too complicated. I needed more focus on Twilight. And then uh, when I started getting the coloring, uh, coloring it, I had a like discs, like levels of discs uh, above her head, and. Later on, like, okay, this is blocking the, pers uh, the, the composition, so I made it a swirl instead. That's something you have to continuously think about in an illustration, primarily before you start coloring, but this happened in, in the middle of it. Um, how the composition is looking. Is there like, is it too busy in a certain area? Is it, getting, is it getting lost? Where are people looking at, and how can you get the attention back to the center point? Mm -hmm. So that, I had a lot of thinking going on in that uh, going on in this image, and from a frustration of the art block turned into one of my best pieces. So who knows? Maybe art block can be the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Oh. This one. <laughs> Uh, this one is a bit of a personal one um, because in the show, you know, Dash being adopted sister, so to speak, of Scootaloo. Uh, the sibling, uh, being a sibling myself, I really enjoy the bond I have with my own sister. And it was winter at a time. I just, I just wish I can uh, hang out with my sister in the snow again and snowboard. And, uh, through those feelings, I decided to draw Rainbow Dash on a bench with Scootaloo just hanging out together. And I really try to push that kind of emotion in, the, the softness, the, uh, the, the cool feel of being with someone. On the opposite spectrum, I was really exp um, trying to see where I can, how, if I can push down the colors of Rainbow's hair, because it was, otherwise it would have been way too vibrant for this piece. And at the same time, I want to remember that Rainbow Dash, she tries to act cool, so why not give her some bubble gum for, for her to chew? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, snow. I love snow. Who doesn't love snow? Well, unless you're working in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's it. Uh, so I'm Lauren. I'm the head of BronyCon's design team. Uh, some know me as Art Mom, um, and I'm going to. I'm more of a, des a graphic designer, um, so I'm going to have a little bit of a different uh, set of things. But I do do some art. Um, so here, I, I've just included one of my most recent pieces. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of David Lanham, if anyone's familiar with his um, work. So uh, this is very much inspired by his his style. This particular piece. It's a it's a error post mail mare. Um, because I also have a, I have a thing for airships. Um, but my primary contribution, uh, here at BernieCon is, is graphic design and branding. Um, so a lot of what I was involved in and continue to be involved in is the branding of the, of the con, uh, starting last year, uh, and through this year, we, uh, revamped the logo 
and um, each year we create an annual logo, um, which is the one in the corner. Uh, and then this year we're also in introducing branding for Bernie Palooza. Um, so I worked on, on all of that branding uh, there are a lot of typographic refinement and um, typographic choices go into developing a brand. Um, so that's a lot of what I did. Uh, with the BronyCon logo, for example, this was based on a, um, the existing logo from 2013. Um, and what I did was I went through and I redrew it and um, put it onto a grid and uh, got it working at very small sizes. There's a lot of different things you have to think about when you're doing graphic design um, as far as the reproducibility of logos and type so uh so this new logo that we that we brought out uh, last year works very well in small sizes and in different placements and in different colors um, the annual logo we change every year this year it's based on our theme which is the clash of the cosmos um, so it's it's sort of like a planetary thing and, and a lot of these projects are collaborative with the team so um while i did quite a bit of these i, I didn't do all of this um, for example, the, uh, whenever we announce a VIP, we have some announcement art. So uh, there, for example, is some announcement art that I worked on, but I didn't do the initial sketch. I did the uh, coloring and the, and the line work over top of it. Um, so uh, that's mostly what I do uh, with BernieCon. Um, Hello. Okay. <laughs> Round of applause. So we are going to do Q and A. Um, whoever wants to ask a question can come up and stand in line right here. Um, just let me know what the question is before, because we have to make sure that nothing bad gets asked. So. Here you go, kiddos. <laughs> See everyone. <laughs> I think they did pretty well. Mm -hmm. Hi there. I just wanted to say that I really liked all of your artwork. It is very creative and unique, and I wish I could be, have that kind of artistic ability. My question to you guys is, if you guys all want to answer with a short little yes or no or whatever, is have you ever guys had been like part way into a uh, picture or whatever, and then you just got to a part where you literally could not finish it or get it down right, where you actually trashed it? Story of my life. Yeah, <laughs> there's several, there are several. Um, for me, it happened, excuse me, it's, for me it's happened quite a, fi quite a bit, but what I've, scene that helps is you really should try doing thumbnails before you work on a final project because when you do thumbnails you can mess up as much as you want go as simple as, as complex as you want but it's not the entire picture so you're not going to have yourself frustrated as a uh, as often so i highly recommend doing thumbnails they're just little tiny pictures that you should do because that lets you work out all the kinks, and when you finally get to your final product, you know the direction you're going. I agree. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And also, practicing always makes perfect. It's, I know a lot of people who just try to draw something, and they're just like, this is too hard, and just gives up, never goes back to it, me being one. But it, it's, it's always good to always go back to what you were working, for, working on because it could possibly be your next masterpiece. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with that. Exactly. Yeah, what, what I sometimes also do, like sometimes I just scrap something and take a look at it. And um, if something is too difficult, then what I sometimes try is uh, take one part of it and practice that. Just something that you enjoy. Like that's also important, keeping yourself motivated. So take a little part of it that you enjoy, practice it. If that improves, that just that only helps the uh, final uh, product that you eventually want, the end goal. Uh, so small steps uh, can be very important in this. Um, I usually get that feeling when I'm drawing a picture with like a detailed background and it's not turning out the way I, how I imagined it. And like this one piece I did where I had to draw like a cliff with like these rocks and stuff and I just spent days trying to draw the, trying to draw the rocks right and it just wasn't turning out. And what I did was like I just 
stayed away from that picture for like a day or so and went back to it and then and then um, I figured it out and managed to finish it. So usually taking some breaks from a picture can, um, you know, if you're, if you're struggling to like um, get something right in a picture, maybe taking a break from it and then coming back to it later will help. Yeah, I second the break idea. I actually recognize that I have a very stubbornness and when I paint, I don't want to trash it even though it's not working. So what I try to do is I juggle several paintings at once so that none of them become stagnant and that it gives me an opportunity by force to paint one and then come back to it in the later part of the cycle so I can recognize, because sometimes you just zoom in on a spot and you don't see what it's doing to everything else. So when you come back with a fresh set of eyes, you're like, oh, okay, well, I learned from this other painting what I can borrow of what I learned there and then address it in the one that's stagnating. So that's what I do. So I just try to juggle like four or five at once. I have a quick uh, question. Do we, uh, do we all answer the questions or just one of us at a time? That's a lot of questions. People who want to have a question right there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, my, my answer is um, I have illustrations I put on hold for months I still want to get back to. It's just, you know, it's time. And also sometimes you just have to toughen up and just pu push through it and not get attached to your work either because you'd be like, oh, man, this is awesome. And then it's like, ah, oh, this is horrible. If you don't get attached to it, you just actually end up putting more effort into it and it actually comes out a lot better. It's kind of backwards thinking, but it works. Um, so I make plushies, so. <laughs> 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 By the time I realize something is wrong, I've already put 10, 12 hours into something because you sew them from the inside and then you flip them inside out. So at that point, it's quite a bit of time wasted, but if it's really not working, I trash it, like it goes in the trash bin. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad, but I would rather create a quality product than something that I wouldn't stand by. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in graphic design, um, often whenever you see a logo, like there are a hundred other logos that came before it that were just tossed out. Um, and so a lot of times I'll, sp I'll spend 99% of my time drawing ideas, and I only end up going with one and and sort of fleshing that out to a final product. So a lot of my a lot of my work is just sort of thrown in the trash by the time I get to the end product. Um, I apologize for everyone for taking so much time on that one question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we should just do if you want to answer the question, you can unless it's specific to you. So. Hi guys, um, I have actually two questions um, to all of you. Uh, how you guys are staying, being motivated? Because I have some personal issues, like I'm trying stuff and I'm, it's, not, it's not looking good and then even worse, I'm looking at your stuff and I say, oh gosh, my stuff is so, 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 so damn poor. So yeah, what's the key to being motivated? Well, for me it's, what you love to do. You don't have to draw something that you don't want to draw, but sometimes drawing what you don't want to draw will make you better. So drawing what you don't want to draw will make you better at something you love to draw, but what is the main reason why you're drawing? Do you enjoy it or is it for the money? If it's for enjoyment, you'll always find motivation, so you, you just have to keep trucking through and, you know, go for it, buddy. Well, the issue is, like, I, I like to do it, but when I see my, um, what I've done, and the, the problem is I compare it to yours. Your oh, no, never compare your art to anybody else, because in the end, yeah, the artist is the harshest critic to their own work. I Which, hate my art. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of work that's like, man, this is pretty crap. But in reality, everyone else is just looking at it like, whoa, this is amazing. And so, you just smile and nod. Yeah, well, thank I'd you. Say, just keep at it, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, Second question is to Assassin Monkey. Uh, how you are able to do 16 hours long streams? Because that's um, uh, insane. <laughs> Ponies. <laughs> <laughs> and Applejack, of course. Always Applejack. OK. <laughs> yeah, she's always there with me in the corner when I stream. So like two of them even. So <laughs> two Applejacks in the corner always helps. OK, thank you. Hello, everyone up there. Um, my question is for, of course, 
as an artist, it's always good to control factors in your environment when actually creating art within all of your each unique mediums. Can you tell me about one factor that you do take in apparent to actually your environment that you control to actually make you more ease to actually creating? Mm -hmm. Is it like something that makes us motivated to draw? Is that your question? What makes you most comfortable? What, what makes, makes it smooth out the process? What I personally do is I throw on my headphones and I go somewhere where I can either just sit up and lean my canvas up against me or sit up against the bed and just start painting. Because once I get music going, I'm in my own little world. That's what I do. Music. <laughs> Sometimes I just keep moving the brush around and like I'll get somewhere. <laughs> I just uh, work at my own pace, and I like listening to something whilst I draw. Like sometimes, um, usually I listen to music, but um, I sometimes get bored of my music. So I just like uh, put YouTube videos on of like someone talking, and it's just nice to have like on in the background whilst you're drawing. It's very relaxing. Uh, like most people, white noise, music without words, and cat traps, boxes, so that my cats sit in them and not on my tablet. <laughs> <laughs> when I uh, do streaming online to Picardo, I love having a, an audience, whether it's just one person or 20 people, it doesn't matter, because I feel like I'm obligated to finish something. I feel more, it's feel easier for me to, to finish. When I'm offline, I'm the viewer. I pull up a Picardo stream of someone else, like a Sassa Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I put him on the side of my monitor as I draw, because that's my white noise, watching someone else draw as I draw. It doesn't matter if, if they're better than me or not. I just, ha I just love drawing along so with someone, even if they're not seeing me at the same time. And also, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a clean workstation really helps for me. Uh, if my desk is messy, I won't get anything done because I don't know where anything is. And I think it, that applies to things that aren't just plushies. Like if you're a traditional artist, you really need to know where everything is. Um, yeah. I, um, I actually keep a messy workspace um, <laughs> because I like to keep a lot of art around me. Um, and so when I work, I typically have my tablet and my screen and my you know, my laptop, and then I just have stuff everywhere um, to keep me inspired and sort of keep me thinking. Uh, it may not even be other art, it might be books that I'm interested in or, or um, objects, but I, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much for your responses. Thank you. Thank you. For digital drawing, what um, programs do you use? Photoshop and Sai. Yeah, same. Yeah. I use purely Photoshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all. Like, yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, I use like Sai for drawing and coloring and then um, most background stuff and then Photoshop for like um, finishing touches like. Um, uh, what's it called? Effects. Yeah, effects and um, color overlays and stuff like that. I just use Photoshop. I experiment with a lot of programs, primarily Photoshop and Sketchbook, but pretty much if you know one program, you can know them all. Currently, I'm trying to master Corel Painter. On the go, I use Procreate as an iOS-only app, and that's a digital drawing tool for the iPhone and iPad. Like this thing on my iPhone, not sure if you can zoom in on that at all. <laughs> no, probably no. not. Let's see. There you go. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So basically, it, it's just another tool. You learn how to use it. You, it's, just, it's like a pencil. You learn how to use the pencil. And once you have that down, you just draw. Um, I, I work with uh, Clip Studio or Manga Studio um, and uh, Illustrator. I actually do a lot of Illustrator stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have one question for everybody and then one for Citra. Uh, the question for everybody is, so what is the least favorite thing that you've ever had to draw? Self-portrait. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> When you get that one person who says, I want a commission of this oh, pony God. doing it, some crazy blast coming out with like their OC that has five horns, three wings, 50 colors, <laughs> that. <laughs> you bald have one. I 
kind of want to say like anything that's not Applejack, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, stick to like my work is mostly organic and like I don't use any guidelines. So anything that requires like a guideline, like mechanical stuff, I kind of stay away from. Um, usually, like uh, with commissions, when people like don't give me references and I kind of have to guess like what they want, and it's really frustrating because. I really want to get it right for them, but um, at the same time, they don't have references, so it's very frustrating. Have you ever gotten a reference with like the generator ponies? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I would prefer that. I would prefer <laughs> a, generation, a, a generator pony than no reference at all, because at least it's something. I just need like a pony and, and um, uh, color, um, the colors, really. I actually, I don't like doing commissions where there's too much information. <laughs> I had one person ask me to draw a character that had a pink jacket, and over that a blue jacket, and then over that I think it was a yellow jacket, and then over that was a black jacket, but you could only see the black jacket. And then there were a bunch of shirts under that too, and then the pants went through the same phenomenon, and it was like a block of text. I, I just couldn't get what, I, what he wanted. Why couldn't he just say black jacket? But I think he wanted me to just like make it big. But yeah, it's just too much information. Dang, man. I'm the same with him. Overload of information on what you want is not good. And also the opposite is true, uh, where you just give the artist free reign. Give us some information. Not like a, like a whole backstory of, of your character, but something for us to work on and allow us to, uh, uh, that's the ignition for our creative juices. You don't just give us an empty truck and say, drive it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm very much in the same in the same boat. Uh, when there's too little information for when I'm working on a design or some or an art piece, um, that can be very frustrating. But when there's too much, it's very stifling, um, creatively. So you can say your least favorite thing that you've had to create too if you're um, making plushies. Well, sometimes I have to make like the same plush like ten times in a row, which is really annoying. <laughs> Or sometimes when I'm making OCs, they'll provide like 10 different references and none of them are the same color. All of them have different manes. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, question for Citra. On the Me Street Pass Plaza, there is a me that looks exactly like you named Fart Hoofer. <laughs> oh are you Fart Hoofer? <laughs> I had some burritos recently. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. So once you have like a basic sketch and or like an idea of what you're drawing, is there any like tips or mindset that you kind of like go into to determine like how you're going to shade it? Like, for example, like how dark should you make it or if there's multiple light sources, anything like that? Mm, I would say I would go back to the whole thumbnail thing. That's where you can really work out what you're planning on doing and not just what the angle of the Im image is, but what kind of colors you're going to use and um, what kind of angles, what light sources. That's actually what I did for my L Luna and Celestia painting. I couldn't work on it until I had a basic idea and l colors before I dished it out on that big thing because it's this big. I'm not about to mess something that big up. So I would, I would highly recommend the thumbnail thing again. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely agree. Like with thumbnails, getting an idea of uh, how the composition and uh, such work and where the light comes from, and um, the thing also is with like something being dark and light, it it kind of depends on what you're making and what you're going for. Um, if you're like doing paintings, like um, what I do, uh, the main thing that is key in all the different styles is like being able to um, portray a shape uh, according, like make something look round when it's supposed to be round and square and, and those kind of things. And then you can still vary like the gradients, like make it a bit darker, make the light a bit softer, and those kind of things. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Evening, everyone. Uh, how long have each of you been in, how long have each of you been doing art for? Since I can hold a pencil. Same, um, same but yeah. Yeah. how long have you been doing art seriously? Like, Seriously, like when I started drawing ponies or when I decided to join DeviantArt to post that? It's just, I don't know. Which one would you rather answer? I mean, I started drawing like since I was 
in kindergarten and got in trouble for because I kept drawing on a blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, really drawing, yeah. I'd say like middle school maybe. Um, when I started drawing ponies was like in 2013, even though I said I'm never drawing ponies. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a, always kind of a tricky question for me. Like I, before 2011, I didn't do a lot of art and was uh, working with school and those kind of things. Um, 2011 kind of picked up, and but 2012, like in the middle when I started ponies, like that's where it really started. <laughs> like nice. since then, like I've made more art in the last three years with ponies than all the art before that combines. I, um, I kind of started uh, digital drawing when I was like in my young teens. Like I saw all this art on DeviantArt and I was so inspired and, and, but I would like draw with a mouse and stuff until I discovered like tablets and, and, um, and yeah, I've just been drawing uh, digital since, but before that I was just, like when I was a kid, I was just trace, <laughs> like kids do. <laughs> well, I went to school for art, so since then been kind of doing it. I've doodled my whole life, but I didn't really take it too seriously until I was in college. I've been at it for uh, 10 years, approaching 11. I started when I was a freshman in high school. It was a forced class in art to, it was a, for graduation, an elective course, and I was like, no, nah, I hate art. I loved it. Uh, I didn't start getting good until like a, uh, year five. That's when I started doing a little bit more drawing. But, uh, you know, as you can see, we progressed all at different rates, at different levels. Some a few years, some many years. It doesn't matter how long it takes for you to draw, as long as you just naturally progress yourself. And don't be comparing yourself to others. The reason why I'm saying that is because I have friends who drive themselves insane trying to match other people's levels in a short amount of time. Go at your own pace, and most importantly, draw because you love it. So, yeah, 10 years. Um, I taught myself to sew about four years ago. Before that, I had never touched a sewing machine or anything. Um, yeah, so I've about four years. <laughs> um, I've been doing, I mean, I've been drawing ever since I can remember, but uh, for the past seven years, I've been doing design professionally um, and doing art for, gosh, since middle school or, or so. So, I guess that'd be like that. Many years. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hi. Um, I had a question for like drawing ponies. Do you guys ever get like bored of drawing ponies yep. and then like draw other things? And what other things do you draw besides ponies? Yeah. Can't get bored drawing ponies. <laughs> I just can't do it. But I do draw other things, and when I do draw other things, it's mostly my my my, uh, my major is animation, so it's usually something that would pertain to maybe stuff I would like to animate someday, my own characters and stuff like that. Um, other people get tired of me drawing ponies, <laughs> including my boyfriend. He's not a brony, so he's just like, "Why are you always drawing ponies?" And I'm just like, "That doesn't make you money." I'm just like, "Excuse me." <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those plushies? <laughs> but um, I don't get tired of it. I draw ponies every day. I have a comic. I use Illustrator to make those ponies. And it gets tedious because it's the same pony in this comic. But in the, in the end run, in the, in the end run. Yeah, in the end run. Is that, is that a word? Sure. OK, <laughs> long run. There you go. In the long run, oh. it's like a, I like doing it. And I like seeing other people like the comics that I'm doing. So, no, I don't get tired. Yeah, it, it does help when other people like your stuff. And, like, sometimes I also just try to switch focus. Like, sometimes I just focus on the clothing, and it just happens to be on the pony. Or, I, like, the hair, just make the hair or an expression, and just, it happens to be on the pony. Usually Applejack, <laughs> but, like, yeah. We get it, you like Applejack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just don't look in my favorite folder on DeviantArt. Like, I'll, yeah. <laughs> Um, I do have days when I am kind of like a bit fed up with ponies, but most of the time I, I, um, I don't get bored of drawing ponies. I love drawing ponies. Um, 
but I do get really um, excited when I get a commission that is a non-pony commission, like if I have to draw a dragon or something, and it's, it's really fun to draw, and because um, it's different, because I always get like um, ponies, uh, pony commissions to draw, so it's, it's really good when I get to draw something new. I guess me. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I draw ponies primarily because I keep having ideas for them, and that's the problem, that's an issue I'm trying to get over because I want to draw some Splatoon art. <laughs> I want to draw some Steven Universe. Yeah. And so I was like, there's all these other things I can be drawing, or even original concepts, but I keep getting sucked in and drawing more ponies because of more ideas. So I was not getting bored of it, I'm just having too many ideas for it that I end up not doing it and not doing other things. But lately, I've been shifting that over to a more balanced level. I'm still kind of in my honeymoon phase with ponies, but um, <laughs> I do get a lot of opportunities to design and draw other things usually, so it's, it's nice to sort of get away from it now and then and come back to it. All right, thank you. Um, do you have any uh, tips on drawing perspective and different poses for characters? <laughs> yeah, <guys>? I do. <laughs> I have. Um, you sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, like um, I always draw um, circles. Like the head is a circle. I draw circles for the eyes and circles for the nose. Like if I want to draw a pony looking up, the, the circle for the nose is going to be like up here. Um, and that kind of helps a lot with like um, perspective, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, that's kind of basically. I think uh, like uh, something that applies to any anatomy or like even just buildings and other stuff, like if you can break something down into shapes, yeah. into just basic shapes, uh, um, then you can uh, more easily like put a perspective on it. Uh, like uh, that's also why like um, uh, basic object uh, still lives can be fairly useful uh, to start out with to get an idea of like which angles and such. <laughs> I got one. All right. Uh, to practice perspective, you definitely need to know about the different types of perspective: one point perspective, two point perspective, three points perspective. A good way to practice is to take photographs, buildings and uh, uh, streets and everything, and. Uh, try to draw on top of it, trying to find the vanishing points and where all the the lines are because real life is all about perspective. Even looking down these aisles, I can see the horizontal lines right now. As for uh, practicing action poses, you need to um, know proper anatomy pretty good, but uh, quick two-minute doodles of each pose, literally just two minutes or even 10 seconds, forcing yourself to just draw them real quick don't have to be perfect. That's the mentality. You need to get out of being a perfectionist and more into um, in, uh, getting into the motion of creating these poses automatically because um, you need to do pretty much a, a thousand poses before it starts getting more organic. So start drawing those 10 second poses now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. What are your tips on shading? Because I'm kind of a beginner at art, and I'm not very good at shading, and I just need tips, I guess. I, I would really suggest starting with simple shapes and trying to do still life. Set up like an egg and a banana next to your desk if you're a digital painter and put a spotlight on it and see how the light falls on it. There's a reason why you do simple shapes first, because those simple shapes translate to everything, even a face. You know, your nose is made of three circles. You know, your, your cheeks are a plane. So those, once you understand it in a fundamental level, you'll then translate that to a more complex object. So you'll see that there's light, even if there's one source, it may hit the table and then reflect back up onto the object. You get very attuned to that when you do still life. Yeah, little tip on that, uh, if you're uh, doing shapes, try to stick with the white, just white, basic white shapes, because then you don't have to worry about color and those things. Another good technique, is trying to visualize what you're trying to draw in 3D form. Like you're looking at this bottle. Now try to turn around and imagine what I'm seeing in my perspective. Forcing yourself to pretend like it's a 3D program, you start seeing the object in 3D space. And that's when you start visualizing it, the, the depth of it, and start 
putting the proper amount of lighting in the certain areas. It's a bit more complex, but when you start thinking more in three-dimensional rather than flat surface, you get to uh, start advancing to the next level. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is just for you, Jaden. <laughs> I was, I've been wanting to know this for a while. What was the inspiration behind My Little Strellis? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Um, me and a couple of friends made OCs a long time ago. They weren't ponies. They were anthropomorphic and human. And just recently when MLP came out, I got inspired with MLP. And so one day when I was walking to school, I was taking the bus. and This was the bus to college. I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if my characters were ponies? And then I started thinking about it, and I just broke out laughing. <laughs> and I think there was this one guy across the street who just looked at me like, OK. So I decided to do, it was originally supposed to do be a 10-page comic. And then I started with the first panel and kept going, even though it wasn't received well at first, because they're just like, oh, people got ponified. Um, it somehow ended up on Equestria Daily, and my inbox blew up. Well, that's because it's a great comic. <laughs> I can say that right now. You're my favorite person. <laughs> so, and, this, hmm? and uh, the second question is actually for anybody who does commissions. Um, how do you deal with the stress? Like, do you ever feel like you're working on something for somebody, and they want it done by a certain time? You feel like you need to rush or something like that? How do you deal with? like timelines or deadlines, feel like you have to be, you have to rush to get it done, but you want the picture to be, you want it to look nice. Well, what I do is I, you have to set the terms of what you're willing and what you're willing and what you're not willing to do. And one of the things I'm not willing to do at the moment because I'm in college is have deadlines because I already have to deal with deadlines. I don't want to deal with deadlines and commissions, but I try, what I would suggest is having a turnaround time as in how, how fast you think you can get the commission done and try to get that commission done by that time, but don't say you have a deadline. And if that person says, I, ha I want this by that deadline, you can either choose to take it or you just don't. It's your commission. You, you choose what you want and what you not, won't want to do. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi. This oh. question applies to anyone. Um, I, my, one of my challenges I've been having is um, trying to polish up my backgrounds. I got the base in ideas, but I can't seem to make it flourish out compared to how, to, how I create my characters. Do you have any advice or tips that you can offer? I'd say references. It's, I don't know why, but it seems like to be a, a little bit of a taboo to use references. It's not. It's a, it's a really great tool. So if you need help drawing something, it's it's not a problem to use references. It can be the best thing you could possibly use for that, for that artwork, so I would suggest that. Another good tip is to treat the background like a character itself. That's why it's so much different from your character, because you're not treating it like a character, because uh, it is a part of the painting. So put as much effort as you would in your character as you would in the background, and it will take time, but that's, that's a general idea to go into it. I see. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. One more question. One more question. Sadly, we only have time for one more question because it's about that time. Oh. So one more question. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my question's just for Earth Song and Denny Butt. Oh. Um, I, I love you both. I follow you on DeviantArt. Thank you. Thank your, you. Your style's, you know, a little bit more um, realistic than, you know, a lot, of, a lot of other ponies. I was just wondering, do you feel like you spend a lot of time or have spent a lot of time um, studying horse anatomy or has it all just kind of fallen in together? Um, a little bit of both, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been obsessed with horses all my life, so I have seen horses a lot and I've, I guess I've ended up getting the basic idea of horse shapes and stuff, but, and, but my style has like been inspired by other artists. Um, one of them is actually Earth Song, <laughs> like she actually, um, like helped me um, with the anatomy more. Like I'm, my style, I didn't want it to be too realistic. I wanted it to be a bit more cartoony, but I didn't want it to be too cartoony. But she really helped me with like um, proportions and stuff like that. Like just observing her art, it's really helped. 
Thank you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I would. I looked at a lot of horses. I had no idea how to draw a horse when I got into ponies, and they kind of look like dogs. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so what I did was start. What I like to do is what I'm about to draw. I study it a lot, and that doesn't mean just looking at references. I watch videos I, whenever I can. We have horses at where we live, so I like to look at them and see how they move. And it kind of fell as I went, and my style kind of developed as that went. So I said, just go for it, and you'll eventually find it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. I think that's all. That's all. Yeah. This was fun. Thank you guys for coming. I can get used to this. <laughs> I want to do one final this. applause for all of our lovely panelists. Yes. Thank you guys. Applaud us. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so everyone up there except for Lauren, I think, is vending. Are you vending, Jade? No. Okay, so everyone except for Lauren and and Jade are vending. So if you guys want to talk to them or buy something, they are in the vendor hall tomorrow, and the vendor hall opens at 10. Thank you guys for coming out. It Thank was you. a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.